Hey everyone, today we're going to go through the entire mesh to MetaHuman workflow and we're going to get our MetaHuman hooked up with Rococo motion capture. So we're going to be using a bust or a sculpt for this workflow, but this will also work with photogrammetry models. And you can also download the entire project file that we're working with in the description below. So let's jump into it. Okay, so a lot of what we've seen with mesh to MetaHuman so far has been making uh, MetaHumans from uh, photogrammetry scans and that is great this workflow will also work using a photogrammetry scan that you create of yourself or of an actor or something but you can also use mesh to metahuman just using any sort of sculpt or bust that you could find online so um, today you know we're just gonna go to sketchfab and if I type in bust we get all these pre-made uh, busts that we can use for the mesh to metahuman process so today we're gonna be making something using this bust of Nikola Tesla, which you can download for free from Musho Genshin on Sketchfab. Looks really good and clean. And using busts, you can create lots of different kind of more exaggerated um, characters that are metahumans, but also, you know, like celebrities. This is a uh, sculpt of Tom Cruise that I found online. And uh, when we load it in through the Mesh to MetaHuman plugin, you, we, we get this uh, pretty good looking Tom Cruise model. Um, so again, this, this workflow that we're going to go through can work with um, photogrammetry as well. We're just going to use a bust uh, instead of a photogrammetry model. So this is Mads, you know, Mickelson. We tried Geralt. Um, so you can do some pretty interesting things just using these busts. So uh, what we're going to start with is we're just going to go and we're going to download this model. So I've already actually uh, downloaded this and the first thing we need to do is just prep the model for the mesh to metahuman process so I'm going to use cinema 4d to do this but you could use blender or Maya or lots of other you know any 3d software package if I import the downloaded model you basically just need to make sure that your model has a UV map and that you have um, deleted anything that might interfere with the mesh to metahuman process, which is really things like excessive hair or uh, other things that are obstructing the face. So the mesh to metahuman um, plugin process in Unreal, it basically just requires you know this part of the face. It doesn't need hair. You can get more detailed and you can work with the ears as well, but it doesn't need it. Really, what you need is this you know center part of the face and that's what it's going to use uh, throughout this process so this actually looks pretty good but one thing we are going to do I'm just going to delete the texture uh, is we need to give it a UV map so I'm just going to open up the basic UV functionality in cinema 4d you know set UV map shrink wrap very basic very ugly looking you know UV map but that's you just need something on there and again you can do that in blender or you can do it in Maya whatever your program is just make sure that that mesh has a UV map and then I'm also just gonna add like a basic texture um, so at this point you know this uh, mesh is good to go again if we needed to we could, and you know, there was long hair on maybe a, uh, a like a, a, a model of a, of a, I don't know, a witcher, say. We could just go in and just literally, let me uncheck this. We could just go in, you know, and we could just start deleting faces. You know, we could delete, we don't need any of this stuff. Um, we could get rid of all of it, get rid of all the hair. And you know, if that hair was was blocking the face, we'd want to do that. So we just we we would need something at minimum, kind of like this. Um, but again, we don't need to do that because this model, uh, you know, the face is already exposed. So I'm just going to export this FVX out, and now we're done with Cinema 4D. So I can close this. So now I'm just going to go. And I'm going to open up uh, Unreal. And before I actually get into Unreal, you're going to need a couple plugins uh, for this process to work. So the first thing you're going to need is the new MetaHuman plugin, um, which you can find just by in the marketplace typing in MetaHuman. You know, it's this MetaHuman plugin. So install that to your engine. We're going to be working in Unreal 5. And then the other thing we're going to want to need, we're going to need. Uh, is the Rococo plugin because we're going to be using our Smart Suit Pro 
and our smart gloves and the Rococo facial motion capture solution to animate our MetaHuman, right? So you wanna install this plugin to your engine as well. So I've already created a blank Unreal project, so I'm just gonna go and open that up. Okay, so I've got a brand new, you know, Unreal project here. So I'm just going to go into edit and we're gonna enable those plugins uh, first because they don't start enabled. So I'm gonna turn on the Rococo Studio plugin, say yes, I'm not going to restart because I also need to turn on the MetaHuman plugin. I'll do that as well. And then I'll hit restart and open the program back up. Okay, so Unreal has been restarted and now I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna add that FBX, and I'm just gonna import that. And there we go, and our model looks fine. So now what we need to do is we need to right click in the content folder, and we're going to uh, just search in this menu that pops up for MetaHuman, right? And we have this MetaHuman identity um, asset that we can create. So we're gonna call this Nikola Tesla Rococo and we're gonna open this up. And when we open this up, we'll get a little prompt to log in to the Epic Games, uh, your Epic Games account. And that's because it's going to um, automatically share this MetaHuman with the account that you have for your MetaHuman Creator. Because we're gonna go into MetaHuman Creator to actually finish all the skin texturing and add hair and do things like that. Um, so, okay, so we've logged in to Epic Games. Now we're gonna to go to Add Components from Mesh. We've already imported our Tesla model here, so there it shows up, and there we go. It's now in the scene. And so next, I'm gonna select Body, and we're just gonna select the body for Tesla. I think that he's going to be a tall, skinny fellow. That's what I imagine him as, so that's what we'll choose. We can change this in MetaHuman Creator later. Um, but then we're going to select Neutral Pose, and we're going to change the focus, or the field of view rather, to 15. So we want a much more narrow field of view, which will make the facial features kind of easier for the program to track. Um, then I'm just going to kind of position my camera uh, so that the face is looking straight on at the camera. And I also just want to have the entire head uh, in the frame, and I'm going to hit Promote frame and all of this information is actually in the unreal documentation that they released you know they released a great video going over this entire process it's, it's really straightforward so if you have any questions you can check uh, their you know official tutorial releases for this process but once we've promoted frame we can then and we see have our frame zero here we can click this track active frame and it'll it'll show that it's loading trackers and it's gonna give us basically these default trackers. It's gonna try and identify a couple parts of the mesh, and it did a great job. So this did basically everything from the jump. Uh, sometimes, you know, you'll hit track active frame and you might get some weird results on the eyes or on the mouth. Um, and if you do, you know, you can zoom into this frame and then you can actually just move these trackers Sometimes it's kind of hard to grab them. Sometimes what I, my little trick is that I'll try and click a tracker and then I will move away, you know, move my cursor and then I can go and grab it. But the default trackers are basically the inner eyelids, as you can see here. We'll zoom out a little bit. This can get a little bit laggy. And then these, I believe they're called, what are they? Nasolabial folds right here. So basically the folds along your Kind of your smile or your cheek and then the uh the mouth and so this all again this looks like pretty good right off the bat again it doesn't want me to click these trackers so sometimes i'll just click one and then i'll like go move the cursor around and then come back and oops there i can grab it so you want to go through if you get any funky results and just um you know make sure to straighten this out um and then what you can do, you know, you can go and you can do a side view and you can do the ears and you can um, kind of go as detailed as you want, but this is gonna be good enough to give us a really good result. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is. Next, we're gonna click MetaHuman Identity Solve. And this is gonna go in and actually generate that mesh uh, that we're gonna use in MetaHuman Creator. So now that that little progress bar is done, if you see we click B, 
look at this. We've got, and then, then we uh, turn the camera back on. We're not locked into that, that frame. There we go. We've got this mesh that has been generated from our input uh, mesh. And so a couple things that we can fix, you know, in MetaHuman Creator is like, you'll see because of this hair that we didn't get rid of, there's this kind of bizarre, you know, bump in the skull and there's some weird things happening with the skull, but we can go in and we'll be able to change um, all of that stuff in MetaHuman Creator. And the way we get it to MetaHuman Creator is we click this Mesh to MetaHuman button and it's basically going to start up the MetaHuman backend. So now, uh, if we go to MetaHuman Creator, which is online, uh, our session has been closed due to inactivity, but I'm going to restart this, and I'm going to be launching the latest MetaHuman Creator. So you can launch the old version, but the new version is what allows you to do all this mesh to MetaHuman stuff. So I'm going to launch the, uh, the new version, and then we'll let it load, and then eventually, in Unreal, we will get a notification that this is finished uploading to our MetaHuman account. So there we go. Get our little dialogue pop up. MetaHuman is now available in Creator and Bridge. And so we go back to MetaHuman Creator and now we'll wait while this loads up, which it can be a little bit slow. There we go. You can see that we've got our Nikola Tesla Rococo uh, mesh right here ready to go. And this is the same process I used to get all these other, you know, Jinx type meshes or Tom Cruise or whatever it was um, already you know, just use the same method to get in the system. So once we're here, you know, I'm just going to select my Nikola Tesla mesh and I'm going to hit edit selected. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to custom mesh. We're going to hit enable editing. And I always like to duplicate and unlock. It basically is going to give me a duplicated version of this mesh. That means my base mesh, you know, is, is still safe in my MetaHuman library and I'm just affecting this duplicate. So. The first thing that I like to do is fix some of these weird deformations on the skull. So if you go to custom mesh, you can see we have this overall influence slider. So this is basically, if we slide this all the way down, you can see this is kind of a typical mesh metahuman. And then all the way up, this is the mesh that we created with mesh to metahuman. But we can also go in and just affect certain regions uh, of the, uh, you know, the, Im the inputs influence. So if we just select this top uh, kind of skull region and we turn this down, you can maybe see some of these changes that is, uh, you know, it's just making the top of the head look a little bit more human. Um, so I'll do the same thing for the forehead. And there you go. You can see right here that kind of rhino horn is disappearing. Now we have a more normal skull. So that's one thing that I normally do on these sculpts, especially because um, you know, the hair in the mesh tends to, to mess things up. You know, we can also go in and if your character has really big eyes, you know, you might need to adjust the eye influence or something like that, but you can kind of go through and, and make sure that everything looks right in here. This is my first stop. Next thing we're gonna do is go and assign a skin because that's obviously gonna make this look much more real. So I'm just gonna hit, you know, assign and we're gonna go find a skin color. And I'm imagining Nikola Tesla is kind of not going outside very much, so pretty pale. You know, there we go, something like that. Um, the biggest, most important slider in the skin section, however, is gonna be this texture slider. And this slider is where I found you can get the real variety uh, for your MetaHuman. So, you know, if you want kind of an older uh, skin texture, you know, usually that's kind of at the end. So maybe, you know, Tesla's, you know, he's older maybe. So maybe like that. That's kind of the vision of Tesla that we're, that we're looking for, right? A little bit older. Um, and this gives you all that really interesting detail in the skin. I can also change this uh, render method to ray trace instead, instead so it gets a little bit better. Um, okay, so skin is looking pretty good. Um, you know, usually I'll look up what eye color the person had. I don't know in Nikola Tesla's um, case, but you know, that's, that's something that you can do. Um, one thing I will usually do is just the lips. I like to select a lip color just because sometimes they're a little oversaturated and then I can turn the transparency, you know, up and down. I can kind of get something that's a little bit more 
more natural. So maybe something more like their skin tone. Yeah, so something like that. Something just a little bit less garish. And what you can see, which I think is actually really interesting, is in the model that we did in, in Unreal, um, if we go back to frame zero, you can see this lip kind of got squeezed, right? We could have gone in and maybe adjusted this a little bit more, <clears throat> but because we didn't, I think it actually gives a really, when, when there's small um, kind of discrepancies, it gives you kind of these really interesting, more human touches, right? This lip isn't really perfect looking, but it looks more interesting. It just kind of gives the character some, some more interesting features. So I actually don't mind that, you know, it kind of looks interesting. Um, obviously one thing that's huge is hair color uh, and that's going to give a ton of life to your model. So let's go in and add uh, a hairstyle for Tesla that that looks a little bit too cool. I think he has kind of like a, yeah, a nice clean kind of haircut. And I am just going to select for color. Maybe give him some brown hair, but really we want to add in the details panel, this salt and pepper. Let's, see, let's give him this look because I think, you know, we're looking at an older Tesla, uh, wise, you know, so salt and pepper going gray. Um, same thing for the eyebrows. I want to give him some strong eyebrows and we'll select a hair color, make it a little bit lighter, turn up that salt and pepper, you know, cause he's aging and then he needs that big old uh, mustache for sure, right? So there we go. You know, we now we have our metahuman, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much done. Um, and if we hit, you know, idle, we can see this uh, in motion. You know, we can change the environment here. And you end up with this really fantastic result that you can use uh, in your projects and that we can drive using, you know, the mocap uh, process as well. Um, so this guy's looking great and metahumans are essentially saving all the time. So the next step to actually get this metahuman into our project is I just, you know, usually exit back to the main screen to make sure that it's saved up. And then if, when I jump back into Unreal, I can close down this part of it because we don't need this, uh, I, you know, metahuman identity anymore. We actually don't need any of this stuff. So I'm just going to delete all of this. And if we go to add Quixel bridge, we can open up the Quixel bridge, which is built in. You need to be logged into the same metahuman creator account that you're using to, you know, that we in metahuman creator that we just did. And then if you go to metahumans, my metahumans, you will find it right here, right? This is the guy that we just created. So I've already gone in and I've created this guy a couple different times. So because I, so I don't need to go and re-download him again. But normally, you know, you click download and then it would download for a little while because they're pretty beefy. Uh, but then once it was done downloading, you would be able to find it in this my metahumans uh, section. So I've, again, I've already got him. He's already downloaded. So if I hit export, it's going to start adding this metahuman into Unreal 5. And so I'll just kind of let it load into Unreal 5 before we, we keep moving. Here we have our metahuman folder. You can see it's been added to our project. We just need to enable these. And then we're gonna let this uh, prepare and start compiling all the shaders. And you can do this at whatever point you want, but I usually just like to let it just do its thing and then I'll come back to it when it's done. Okay, so we are done uh, compiling the shaders and uh, we need to do a restart but instead of restarting I'm actually just going to close out of this project and that's because we need to add a couple things to our unreal project uh, folder in the finder so this is the uh, you know folder where my unreal project that we're that we're working in is located and I'm just going to go into the content folder and in here I'm going to make sure that I've added this bone maps folder um, and I'll delete it out of here just to be sure, but I will add this back in. So this folder will be, uh, you can find it in a link in the description below alongside with the, the project that, that I'm working on right now. 
as well as this mocap folder, which we're gonna use a little bit later on to uh, correct a, a bug that is showing up, the, up in the metahumans currently, which may or may not, you know, still exist by the time you see this tutorial. So, um, you know, we didn't do a restart, but we did close the program and reopening it, uh, it, which is essentially a restart. So I'm just gonna open the program back up, um, the project back up. And then what we're going to do is basically the typical Rococo setup for a metahuman, right? There's no real functional difference besides a few quirky uh, bugs, as I said, between uh, the mesh of metahumans, metahumans, and the old metahumans. So let's go through and just kind of set up our normal Rococo mocap. Uh, workflow. So I'm going to jump into this MetaHumans folder and the first thing I'm going to do is open up this blueprint of our MetaHuman, the main overall blueprint. Okay, so now that we have this open, the first thing I'm going to do is just click on LOD Sync over here. And I'm going to set this to zero because I always want our metahuman to be at the highest level of detail. I'll compile that and save. Its uh, default is at negative one, which changes the metahuman level of detail based on the distance of the camera from the metahuman, which means you get pop in for hair and things like that. We don't want that. Um, what you, now what you would normally do is we'd start working on the body blueprint of the metahuman. So I would normally select body and then I would go over here and under skeletal mesh, where it says male, tall, underweight body, which is what uh, our Tesla model is, male, tall, underweight, skinny, right? Um, and normally we would click this blueprint button and that would take us to the male, tall, underweight blueprint. But the current metahuman, meshed metahumans as they're set up, for some reason this takes you to the default metahuman skeleton, which is the female, medium normal weight skeleton. So that's not what we want. We need to affect the male tall underweight skeleton. So I'm going to just minimize this and we're going to go find the uh, body blueprint for our Tesla character manually. So you can find it under common and then you're going to go to male. In our case, it would be female if you're working with a female metahuman and then tall, right? Because we know our metahuman is tall. So and then it, we have this underweight option and we click body and here we go. We have our male, tall, underweight blueprint. So I'll open that up. And you can see here we have the right nomenclature for the blueprint that we're in. So it's gonna open it up in <clears throat> the event graph. And we're gonna double click on the anim graph because this is where we wanna be. So we are going to zoom in here. We're just gonna make a little room. And again, this is basically where we come back to the, the typical workflow for Rococo motion capture. First thing we're going to do is add a Rococo body pose node and we will wire that in. Boom, boom. And next we're going to create a couple variables. So you should be able to see what I'm doing here. We're going to hit this plus button on variable. And the first one I'm going to call Rococo actor name. And then under variable type, I'm going to change this to name. Uh, I'm going to drag that into my scene and hit get Rococo actor name. And I can then whoop, wire this into the Rococo actor name, uh, you know, little pin on our, on our Rococo body pose node. Then I'm gonna add a new variable and I'm gonna call this one Rococo body map. And you should still be able to see this. Hopefully I'm not blocking it too bad. Um, and we're gonna change the type of this one to, if we search for Rococo, Rococo body map data class reference and though these options will only show up uh, and as well as this rococo body pose node if you've already loaded in and enabled a rococo plugin so if you can't see these it's probably because you don't have the rococo plugin actually loaded in so i'm going to drag this one onto the blueprint get rococo body map and i'm going to wire this into our body pose node at which point i'll hit compile and save so you can see some wonkiness starting to happen here and you can just ignore all this, right? This is because of a bug in the mesh to metahumans right now, but it won't matter for our purposes. However, when we did this, we got a couple new <clears throat> options here under Rococo body pose, the Rococo actor name, which I'm going to leave blank and then Rococo body map. 
and down here I'm going to go select metahuman bone map and this was that bone this is from the bone maps folder that we loaded in to the project folder earlier uh, which again you can find uh, in the description below there's a download link for that bone maps folder that will give you access to these bone pre-made bone maps so I'm going to load in metahuman bone map I'm going to hit apply very important to hit apply and then I'll hit compile and save and the last thing I'll do is I'll select this control rig node and under control rig class, I'm going to go to Rococo MetaHuman Tpo. So this file is also in that bone maps folder that we loaded in. So once I load this in and we compile and save, you can see that now Tesla is in a Tpo. So that's what we need for our Rococo mocap. So at this point, you know, compile, save, make sure, and we can close this out. We don't need it anymore. We don't need this either. Now we're gonna do a quick fix to the MetaHuman face. So this time we can just select face in this overall blueprint. And I'm gonna double click in here, skeletal mesh. It's gonna open up the uh, Tesla face mesh right here. And I'm gonna click blueprint. And again, it'll open up in the event graph. We wanna go double click on the anim graph. And then we're gonna zoom in to between the live link pose and the AR kit mapping pose. So currently uh, there's a weird thing that happens with metahumans when they use AR kit facial motion captures, which, which is what we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using facial motion capture from an iPhone. And when the metahumans do this, they tend to leave the bottom lip hanging down when uh, the actor's lip, you know, mouth is actually closed. So you'll be going like this, but the metahuman will be kind of hanging their mouth open, which does not look good. So the fix to that is we're just gonna add a modify curve node right here. We're gonna wire it in between the live link pose and the AR kit mapping pose. And then if we right click on this animation pose, we can add a curve pin. We're gonna add a mouth shrug lower pin. There we go. And we're gonna enter in 0.5 for the value. And you'll notice on this lip here, once we hit compile, so this is a weird visual glitch that's again happening with these meshed metahumans. You can see that it kind of, it moved the upper lip it looked like, but it's actually moving the lower lip. What matters is that this says mouth shrug lower. In fact, let's try and hit zero, recompile this, 0.5. So that's just a visual glitch. I've tried, you know, sometimes I, I've tried to go in and do the mouse shrug upper, but it's basically just visually swapped. So you want to keep it with this mouth shrug lower. It's just one of these small bugs that the new meta humans seem to have. So now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our main blueprint. We're kind of going to do the final step here for making our meta human ready to use. So we're going to, at the very beginning, this event begin play. I'm gonna drag out this body onto the blueprint. And then from here, I'm going to wire in a get anim instance node. From here, I'm going to select a cast to, and then we want to cast to the blueprint for our metahuman, which again, in this case, remember is M underscore tall underweight. So you can search for it, you can just kind of type in M or F for female, if it's a female metahuman, and it should show up. But remember, you want you need to be casting to the blueprint for that metahuman. In this case, male, tall, underweight. So I'll add that. I'm gonna wire this event begin play into this node right here. And then from the blue pin, we're just going to wire in a set Rococo actor name, if you search for connect this and then I'm going to connect this to this get console variable and here is where we're going to enter in the actor profile name that we're using in Rococo Studio so in this case it's Sam so I'm going to hit compile and save so at this point I'm just, I'm just going to hop into my actual mocap suit and we're going to start animating our metahuman using Rococo mocap okay so here I am in Rococo Studio and I'm just going to add my suit and gloves, which have already been powered on, onto my actor profile. So again, my actor profile name is Sam, and I'll do a straight pose just to do my initial calibration. And 
And then the other thing we're going to do, we currently have treadmill mode on, so I can't move around. So I'm locked into the center of the scene, which is kind of what I want. We're gonna add in our facial motion capture. So I have uh, this iPhone right here off to the side. And I'm just opening up the Rococo remote. As soon as you do, you get this little notification. We can hit connect. We have tutorials covering how to do this if you, if you don't uh, know how to get started. And once I turn on face capture, there I am in the scene. Add that to my actor profile and here we go. I'm now ready to transmit to our MetaHuman, right? So the last thing I'll do is I'll start live stream. So you need to have a Rococo Plus subscription to have access to these live streaming plugins. Um, I'm using Rococo Studio Legacy, which is what we recommend. So I'm gonna turn on Unreal Engine Streaming. You can see it's streaming to port 14.045 right here. And at this point, I'm just gonna jump back into Unreal. So what we want to do now is we're gonna add in a Rococo receiver. And you can find that, you know, as you just hit plus, you can just type in receiver right here. And we're gonna drag this into our scene. You can see on the Rococo receiver, the port is set to 14045, which is what uh, we are streaming from. So that, that works, we want this, that to match what's in Rococo Studio. And then I'm just gonna drag my MetaHuman out into the scene. Just reset him there. And there we go. So the next thing we need to do before we get him connected up is I'm just going to select him and make sure that the body, torso, legs, and feet are all using the right blueprint. So right now they're set on animation mode to multiple values, you can see here. So we're gonna hit uh, use animation blueprint. And again, we just wanna go find that male tall underweight blueprint, right? That's driving our metahuman. So we wanna make sure that they're all being driven correctly. So now that we've done that, delete the player start, because I hate that, we can go up to window, virtual production, and open up live link. And because we turned on our live streaming module in Rococo Studio, we should just be able to go to Rococo Studio source. And then sometimes if it doesn't show up with both, you just need to re-add it again, and it should have both the body and the face. So the last thing I'll do is I'll click on my MetaHuman, and on the main, uh, you know, head at the top of the tree, we get this live link face subject, and now we can add in that Sam face. And you could also use the live link app, you know, facial mocap app instead, but we're using the Rococo mocap app. So now if I hit play, we're gonna get a semi good result. So as you can see, we now have the body working like this. This looks great. Here we go, maybe we do a new straight pose. But one thing that you can definitely tell is that the face is all jacked up. And this is another bug that MetaHumans currently have. So I'm gonna exit out of play mode. And the way that we're gonna fix this is we're gonna close down this project again. I'm gonna save everything. And we're gonna go back to the project folder, right? And on this pro in this project folder, we're gonna go to content, metahumans, common, common, and then we're gonna delete this mocap app. And in that downloadable, in that uh, link that we have in the description below, you know, we have a downloadable mocap folder that you're gonna replace uh, in, in this common folder. And this mocap folder is just from any older metahuman. They just, there's a bug where they, clearly forgot to add the new mapping or something. Uh, so you just need to add this folder uh, and it'll fix that mouth problem. So if we go and we open the, it back up, and again, this project file will be downloadable for free. So you can also get this mocap folder from within the project file, although it's just, you can also just download it straight from the, uh, you know, uh, from, from the link that we have. So we'll open this back up. And every time you uh, close down Unreal, it will shut down your live link um, connections. So I'm just gonna have to go and open up virtual production live link again. We're gonna go source, Coco, make sure they both show up. 
click on our metahuman to make sure we got this live link face subject still is set, set to Sam. And now, ah, there we go. We got Nikola Tesla looking pretty good. Um, and we can go and do another calibration from the phone. And we got everything up and running. Um, so this process is the same one that you would use to um, get, you know, any mesh that you had uh, that you might have found online or that you might have sculpted yourself, or uh, it's the same workflow for photogrammetry as well. And um, you can go and you can download this project right now and you can open it up and play around and do whatever you want. You know, metahumans are, are free, so there's no limit on what you can do with this model. Um, go for it. You know, this is this is your metahuman to do with as you wish. And the only thing that I'll say that you'll need to do once you download this project file, if you want to play around with it, is you're going to need to go and select the blueprint, uh, you know, the, the, the metahuman blueprint here in the scene. You're going to need to, you know, make sure to change this to the face, uh, you know, the actor profile name that you're, you're using. So when you uh, connect to Rococo Studio, you're gonna have a different actor profile name. So you just need to go and make sure that Unreal and that your your MetaHuman knows that it's not Sam, you know, you just have to go and, and add whatever is in your project. The other thing you're gonna to have to do is go to that main MetaHuman blueprint. And right here, we added this set Rococo actor name. You can see that it's set to Sam, right? Uh, which is my actor profile name. And you're gonna to need to change this to whatever actor profile name you are using. Um, so there we go, that's it. That's the whole workflow. Uh, we hope that this was helpful. Put any questions you have down in the comments below. Uh, and you can also tune in to our live stream every Thursday at 11 a.m. PST, Rococo Office Hours, where you can ask more questions about this or um, you know we can get into some more metahuman uh, related shenanigans. So. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, you know, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.